So we've built authentication with JWTs and everything's working perfectly. But here's something that's often overlooked. Where you store your tokens is actually a critical security decision. Many tutorials recommend storing JWTs in local storage. It's simple, it works, and the token persists even when you close the browser. But there's a significant security trade-off that often gets overlooked. Let me demonstrate exactly what the issue is. So here's a standard login implementation. Username field, password field, login button. Let me authenticate with our test credentials. Good, authentication successful. Now if we look at the application tab in DevTools, there's our token in local storage. Really convenient for development, right? The problem is any JavaScript running on this page has access to it. And when I say any, I mean literally any JavaScript that executes in this context, including malicious scripts. Let me grab some protected data to show this is working. Works perfectly. The token's doing its job. But here's where things get interesting. So imagine someone finds a way to inject JavaScript into your app could be through a comment section, a search box, any user input that isn't properly sanitized. Let's see what they could do. Let's run a simple line of JavaScript here. Just grabbed the token from local storage. Let's see what we got. And there's our entire token, simple as that. In a real attack, they wouldn't just log it, they'd send it to their server, something like this. This would send your token straight to the attacker's server. And this happens completely behind the scenes. You wouldn't even know. Your users wouldn't know their accounts are compromised. Just one line of JavaScript and your entire authentication is completely compromised. If someone can inject JavaScript through any XSS vulnerability, they have full access to your tokens in local storage. This is why major security breaches happen. This is called an XSS attack, cross-site scripting. And with local storage, you're basically leaving your front door unlocked. Okay, so how do we fix this? Well, instead of local storage, we can use HTTP-only cookies. Let's see the difference. Logged in again, but this time the server's sending the token as an HTTP-only cookie instead of in the response body. See that HTTP-only checkbox? That means JavaScript can't touch this cookie at all. It's browser only. Let me prove it. Notice something? Our auth token? It's not there. The browser knows about it, uses it for requests, but JavaScript can't see it. So even if an attacker injects JavaScript into your page, they can't access your authentication token. The browser manages the cookie internally, but keeps it completely isolated from JavaScript. This is exactly the separation we need. And importantly, your application continues to function normally. The browser automatically includes the cookie with same origin requests, so your authentication flow remains seamless. Now, cookies do have their own attack vector called CSRF, cross-site request forgery. Here's how it works. If you're authenticated to a site using cookies and you visit a malicious page, that page can trigger requests to your authenticated site. The browser automatically includes your cookies. Let's see this in action. So here's a classic phishing page, the kind you might get through a sketchy email. Now, when I click this button, watch what happens. It would actually submit a form to our legitimate app. Since we're logged in with cookies, the browser would normally include our authentication cookie. The server would think it's us making the request, and this phishing pages get our protected page. Now, let's do a small change. Update same site attribute to strict. And let's try this attack again. Now look, the request failed with a 401. Why? Because we set our cookie with same site equals strict. Let me show you what that means. The same site attribute tells the browser to only include this cookie with same origin requests. So when that phishing page attempts to make a request, the browser recognizes it's coming from a different site and refuses to send the authentication cookie. Without the authentication cookie, the server correctly rejects this as unauthenticated, attack prevented. For context, strict mode blocks all cross-origin requests, while lax mode allows cookies on top-level navigation, like when you click a legitimate link, but still blocks them for forms and AJAX requests. Quick but critical point. Everything we've covered requires HTTPS. This isn't negotiable. Whether you're using basic auth, bearer tokens, or JWTs, over plain HTTP, they're all transmitted in clear text. Anyone on the same network can see them. HTTPS provides end-to-end -end encryption, headers, cookies, the entire payload. Without it, anyone performing a man-in-the-middle attack, like on public Wi-Fi, could capture your tokens. So always use HTTPS in production, 
and enable HST headers while you're at it. The key takeaway? Use HTTP-only cookies with same site protection, always use HTTPS, and never store sensitive tokens in local storage. If you found this useful, don't forget to like and share.